On this episode of Japanese Gaming Weekly, we'll take a look at brand new story details for Final Fantasy XVI, check out the newly announced Story of Seasons game, and dig into Bravely Default 2's delay. And if you want to stay up to date with all the latest news in Japanese gaming, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Let's get into it. So to begin, let's talk about Final Fantasy XVI and all the new story details that were revealed. So this last week, Square Enix launched the official website for Final Fantasy XVI and it had a lot of new details for the world, characters, and so much more. So now we know the main character's name is Clive Rosefield. And so he is Joshua's brother, actually, it's revealed in the website. And so it says he is his shield, he's his guardian, and Joshua is actually the dominant of Phoenix, kind of the bearer of Phoenix, and they can summon their power as time goes on. And for those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with Final Fantasy XVI's story, dominance basically control icons, or you might know them as summons or eidolons or whatever, powerful beings that we are familiar with from past Final Fantasy games. So in that initial trailer, we also saw a gray-haired little girl named Jill Warwick and she is Clive and Joshua's adoptive sister and it kind of brought peace between another land so that is an interesting piece to it as well it'll be interesting to see how she plays into the story now one thing that did say is that the events set off by the dark icon Ifrit throw Clive on a path to revenge so I guess Ifrit is not, it's hard to tell what Ifrit comes into the story, if he has a dominant, if he kind of acts independently, but Ifrit fighting the Phoenix is like the logo for the game. So clearly Ifrit plays a big part in the story. And my guess is that maybe Ifrit kills Joshua and that sets Clive off on a path to revenge throughout the rest of the game. We'll have to wait for the final game to see. And the tagline when you go to the website says, the legacy of the crystals has shaped our history for long enough. And now I tried to kind of minimize the world story that they posted, but I figure I might as well just read what the website says and that might help out a little more. Now it says the land of Valisthea is studded with mother crystals, glittering mountains of crystal that tower over the realms around them, blessing them with ether. For generations, people have flocked to these beacons to take advantage of their blessing, using the ether to conjure magics that let them live lives of comfort and plenty. Great powers have grown up around each mother crystal and an uneasy peace has long reigned between them. Yet now the peace falters as the spread of the blight threatens to destroy their dominions. So it seems like there's these big hunks of crystals that they built cities around and there is something called the blight that is threatening that. Probably some sort of plague, some sort of disease. So we got a lot uh, from just the website going up. So I would encourage you to go to the website. There's tons of cool art and uh, yeah, it'll just be really interesting to see what new details are revealed. This is getting me really excited for 16 where I wasn't so excited before. So next piece of news, Nintendo did a mini Nintendo Direct, a partner showcase that they call it. And there were a couple pieces of news that we'll talk throughout this video about. But the big one is that Bravely Default 2 was delayed to 2021. It was originally slated for a 2020 release, but they had to push it because I'm sure COVID has messed with it a little bit. But they said it'll now be releasing February 26, 2021. Now alongside this, they also did a video where they talked about feedback they got from the demo earlier in the year and what they're doing to kind of adjust the game based on the feedback. Now the two main ones were the difficulty and the user interface and they did show that the difficulty uh, there's going to be easy, hard, and normal so that you can choose your difficulty at the beginning of the game and they made some seemingly minor adjustments to the user interface to make things easier to understand what character's turn it is, when the enemies are about to attack, things like that. So I would encourage you to watch that video. I'll leave it in the description so you can see all the minute details of what they are changing for Bravely Default 2 in this uh, in the final version of the game. And there was also a new trailer that came out that talked about, you know, they showcased the Beastmaster class, the Bard class, a whole lot more. So Bravely Default 2 looks like it's shaping up to be a pretty awesome game, but unfortunately we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer to play it. In a bit of surprising news, Marvelous announced that there's going to be a new Story of Seasons game coming to Nintendo Switch in early 2021, and it's titled Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. Now, of course, this has a typical setup to a Story of Seasons game. You're wanting to leave the busy city and fix up your grandfather's farm kind of out in nature. And this game seems to be drawing inspiration from Animal Crossing New Horizons, where you can sort of repair pieces to get you access to new parts of the world. And you can sort of customize your farm however you want. You can lay down pieces and decorations. So for people that really liked Animal Crossing New Horizons and how, based on how well that game sold, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there, uh, you can see that there's a lot of new customization coming to this Story of Seasons game. And you won't have to wait too much longer to play this because it's coming March 23rd, 2021 for Nintendo Switch. So hey, 2021, early 2021 seems to be shaping up pretty well. 
Now, if you just can't get enough of your farming life sim fix, they showed more Rune Factory 5 in the Japanese version of the Direct, and that got a release date of May 20th, 2021. So it showcased a bunch of new characters, some improved dungeons and combat, and other things like that. So that is coming in Japan, May 20th, 2021. Uh, Rune Factory 5 was not in the English version of the Direct, so I'm not sure if they're still working on it. It's going to come out a little bit later, but they have confirmed that it's coming to the West, but there was no date, new, no new English footage, no, you know, localized footage or anything like that. But uh, the new gameplay looked awesome. It's really cool to see more of this game and that it's getting a release date. So my guess is that it's probably going to get a summer 2021 or late 2021 release for the West. So keep an eye out for that one. Now, a couple games got shadow dropped during this Nintendo Direct. So there was a trailer for No More Heroes 3, but they mentioned that No More Heroes 1 and 2 will be available for the Nintendo Switch, and they are available right now if you're watching this. Uh, they're each $17.99, and I believe they also have the motion control functionality if you want to use your Joy-Con. So if you're wanting to get into the mood for No More Heroes 3 and you want to pick it up on the Nintendo Switch, they are available right now. In a couple pieces of news that should be really exciting for Trails fans, the Crossbell games and Cold Steel 1 and 2 are both coming to Switch in Asia. So the release dates are that the Crossbell games Zero no Kiseki is coming February 18th and Aono Kiseki will be coming April 22nd, 2021. And that both of the Cold Steel 1 and 2 games will be coming summer 2021 to the Nintendo Switch. Now there, again, there hasn't been an official announcement from the uh, NIS America or XE or any, you know, Western publisher, but you know, they could be porting these games to Nintendo Switch. I mean, NAS America has been porting a lot of Falcom games to Switch, like, you know, Ease 8, Ease 9, Cold Steel 3. So I could see these coming, although it seems kind of late for the cross bubble games, but again, you just never know. We'll have to wait and see on these. And this is kind of a little bit of news, really not much to say, but I thought I'd include it because somebody might ask about it. But Bandai Namco trademarked a game called Tales of Luminaria. And this was trademarked in both Europe and in Japan. Now everyone's been saying this is gonna be a mobile game, but Tales of Crystoria just released for mobile. So I can't imagine they'd be wanting to put another Tales game to compete with their own game this soon. And Tales of Arise is not even out yet, so it can't be that. What could it possibly be? You know, in the last episode of the Giant Sword podcast, the JRPG podcast I do, they were we were theorizing one of two things. One, this could be a standalone anime that it might be tied to an older game, or maybe it has something to do with a rise that we just don't know, or it could be an HD collection of some old games. And Nick from the Giant Sword podcast mentioned that Tales of Legendia has something about the Luminary in that game, so it could possibly be an HD remaster or remake of Tales of Legendia, who knows, but uh, right now we don't know a whole lot about this game, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now, once again, we did not get any release dates this week. I mean, we did get some release dates, but they were in the main headlines, so no release date roundup, but we do have a bunch of really good game deals for you. So we have Ease Memories of Celseta on PS4, Story of Seasons on Switch, and Rune Factory 4 Special on Switch are all on sale for 25 bucks. Trails of Cold Steel 3 is on sale for $27, and Pokemon Sword and Shield are still on sale for $40. So if you're wanting to pick up any of these games, I do have links in the description so you can go pick them up right now. Now, last week, I put out my top 10 must-play PS3 JRPG, so in case you missed that, definitely go check that out. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any upcoming lists or any upcoming episode of Japanese Gaming Weekly. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.